Hello, my friends. Today's content is being recorded on the new moon of October 27th, 2019, but it is timeless in its content. And what I will be covering is the upcoming celebration of Halloween, which really didn't start off that way. But witches, or Wiccans, more like, were actually part of the pagan culture. And their truth is that there were was both the black arts and the white arts. However, in the scrubbing of our culture, the um, papal decree, which was a papa bula, bula, papal meaning coming from the Roman Catholic Church, bula meaning it was a lead stamped um, document that only the leaders that were put in place, unvoted for by the people, whose own cultures were usurped by this new religion, the etymology of religion is to take back by law. Whereas tradition is a crossing over. And um, so learning and remembering the old holidays, uh, the old traditions, will perhaps awaken you and allow you at least an appreciation and an understanding of what it was your ancestors, if you are from European descent, such as I am, Irish and English, what your ancestors died for, what your ancestors were reformed for, what your ancestors had their, their arms taken off so that they um, couldn't uh, practice um, creating healthful concoctions and cauldrons. So, so one is it's so on. It's spelt S A M H A I N in one tradition, and it's pronounced so and then N. Now this book is Lori Cabot's book, and she's um, from a long lineage of witches, and. She um, talks about the religion, not the religion, excuse me, the tradition. That's the big differentiator. So why I'm suggesting taking a look at why someone was usurped and made evil, uh, I'm suggesting you look into it in order to understand more about your past and your own genetics. Now, All Souls Day ended up being uh, celebrated uh, to commemorate the Christian dead, but so in was October 31st and November 1st. Now, honoring the dead is different from worshiping death. Honoring the dead and those who have suffered before you or have paved the way for you to have a more fruitful and beneficial life is much different than celebrating the death cult and thinking death is a way out because it is not. Your body is your teacher and your body and its five senses, om mane pad my om, tasting, smelling, seeing, hearing, feeling, and then the sixth sense, intuition, and or gut, and also the heart, the heart frequency, the heart's ability to feel and heal. doesn't come from the head. Problems come from the head. The heart heals. The heart heals. It creates the toroidal field around your body that allows you to generate a Merkaba. Merkaba. M-E-R-K-A-B-A-H. So, you can um, go ahead and take a look at this book all to your heart's content. I recommend it. And find out what's coming up for you. Now, this is also a new moon, and it's a new lunar cycle. And when it's a new lunar cycle, it's a time of planting seeds, both physically and um, symbolically starting new projects, uh, being creative with something, planting your fall crops.
This is some of the best water ever. Gerolsteiner. It's fantastic. So today, um, I will also talk to you about uh, symbols that you will discover when you are going out into nature or if you dream them. Now, last night I had a really bizarre dream. And I know it was in the fourth hole, fourth dimensional hell hole because everything kept shifting. It was a restaurant that you come into. They had a sign, please wait to be seated. But then every man for himself, and every time you'd, I would go to find a place to sit, somebody else would claim it, or it would be precariously, um, I, I, if you lean backwards, you're going to fall into the water. And every single time I looked for a new place to sit, there was always a new obstacle for me to overcome with regards to it. So, today, the raven, which is magic, called out to me. And it also represents the void. And the void is the possibilities. So in this world where we're told it's a free will universe, but then we're told where to direct our will, it ain't so free, is it? If somebody's telling you uh, that you're in a free will universe, well, at the same time, sending 5G at you and mental disturbances by way of the latest calamity on the news or the new, look at that, squirrel, you know, injunctions, heads are going to roll, justice finally will prevail, the swamp's going to be drained, blah, blah, blah. You know what it is? Let me tell you. That's right. It's a bunch of monkeys talking. Yeah, it's monkeys talking. <laughs> what kind of business is there? You know, there's my business, your business, God's business, and monkey business. Yeah. My monkey's been outside. Here, open up, say ah. Uh. So the monkey business is such that mental disturbances <laughs> distort the third chakra. Artificial information. Unnecessary, stupid crap, blah, blah, blah on television. Smart meters and 5G, they distort the third chakra. And this is a third, this is a free will universe. Yeah! Also, your third chakra, it's your will. It's your willpower. Willpower, I gotta write that down. Mastery of the third chakra equals freedom. Mastery of the third chakra equals freedom which is a good reason for it to be used as an enslavement system. Okay, look up ants harvesting aphids. Essentially, that's what's happening to you. The ants will capture the aphids, and so the aphids can't go through their normal life cycle of getting wings <laughs> and flying away. No, those, those, those aphids are entrapped in sort of a comfortable, like, open air containment system, uh, like planet Earth, and stroked and provoked until they exude honeydew. Yeah. So whether it feels good for the ant to be stroked or whether the ant is frightened, it's producing honeydew. And one of my um, subs alerted me to this, and I get it. If you send love to the wrong direction, it's a tasty little wafer for some fucker who doesn't believe, deserve it, who doesn't deserve it. So your, expatient, your expectation and perception form your reality, or they distort it. Now, if you've had a neural hack, you, you're going to have, okay, you may have expectations that have been set up by a false society that tells you to want things that you really wouldn't want left to your own devices, your own life without television programming. And your um, perception of reality is being distorted by things that I'm not going to go into. But basically, the ingestion regularly of e heavy metals and uh, poisons in your water, that if you don't filter it out and take out um, a particular uh, F <laughs> uh, element on the periodic table, who cares, it's caustic, um, 
It's good for your teeth if you leave it on for two minutes, but it's not good if you swallow it. The heightened rise of degenerative diseases, arteriosclerosis, osteoporosis, neural degeneration, macular degeneration, all point to the same little element and on the table of elements. And guess what? Mercury's on there. An element does not necessarily be it's a good thing. <laughs> Mercury is poison. Lead is poison. Fluoride's poison. So, it can't be a free will universe if your free if your will is misappropriated. You have faulty perception. You have a faulty sense of expectation because somehow expectations have been risen. Maybe you have entitlement issues. Maybe you think everyone's supposed to hand you something because you're entitled to it. Um, and perhaps you're getting thoughts that aren't your own. So, let's go back to this again. Mental mind disturbances or mental mind Fs, which stands for swear word. <laughs> Distort the third chakra. Uh-huh. So you have to work on the third chakra in order to be able to exercise free will. And if you don't exercise free will, my friends, you will not get free. Because the mastery of the third chakra, which is willpower, <laughs> equals your freedom. I wanted you to know that. So rather than analyzing the dark side of sorcery, and it's from this book, Screenshot, if you want to read it yourself. Realize that you're you're that you will fear Raven only if you need to learn about your inner fears of self-created demons. In other words, the Raven is the void. Magic. You are a magician. You're capable of magic. But you have to be paying attention to the cycles of the planet to reawaken the animal instincts that have been domesticated out of you by giving you a nice cushy life with all the gadgets you could possibly want and enjoy and ordering food off a menu without thinking about where it came from. The other creature that came to me, these were all birds today. And we are entering into Sagittarius tomorrow, which is the Archer. And uh, if you want to know about Planetary Tantra, go to nemeta.org, N-E-M-E-T-A dot org. Click on the Planetary Tantra icon, register with a password and a username, and then click on Module 16. I'm not going to teach that right now. I was going to, but my life has gone in a different direction. And I'm looking at my own life and the messages that I get from nature on a regular basis as clues to go where, when, where, and how next. So the hawk is a messenger. You're only as powerful as your capacity to perceive, receive, and use your abilities. Again, you are only as powerful as your capacity to perceive, receive, and use your abilities. That's all I'm going to say about Hawk right now. And then the third bird I saw today was none other than a heron. And it actually flew around and around and around like this. And then it actually went like this. It came in and went around. Yeah, it did. And then it landed. Um, it's like very tired dactyle. But I equate it to the crane when I look at it, and that's how I'm going to read about the, is it here? Huh. Well, the crane is Baba, Baba Muki, and she is representative as having the ability to turn something around. So take, take something like fucking 5G, and like, pachoom, 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 pachoom. Pretend you can deflect it. Like, why not, right? And I thought for sure she had something here for me to read. No. <laughs> okay. I won't read it. But, um, anything else to say about the raven? Yeah. 
A raven is, is um, equivocal to a change in consciousness. You know, a change in your perception and understanding of the world, which is what I'm undergoing, but not. I'm undergoing a distillation of everything that I've discovered to be empowering and bringing it back to the essence of my very self, my very God spark, my very uh, true connection that my physical body and my light body has to the divine and to the earth as my home planet, as my as turtle, as mother planet. So here's to that. So it's about 1550. I'm going to talk about my personal life now. Okay, so I did the whole Bumble thing. I met somebody. He, um, I called him Bob, and he was going to be, he, he made promises right away, and all kinds of red flags went up. Um, including he was already imagining me living there and putting that out there in the first eight days I met him. That's crazy. Uh, that's, that's narcissism. And he told me that I, he felt so energized when I was around. Of course, because as above, so below. Remember I told you about the ants and the aphids? He was like being an ant, stroking, getting all my life force energy, occupying, dominating my time, wanting me to stay, stick with him, um, be with him, do what he wanted, and then, subsequently, our third time out, he changed my order to suit his needs, and then he took home the leftovers. <laughs> I actually took some home out of like, huh, I see what he's done, I see what he's done, and I threw mine away. But I saw what he, he did. He was like, okay, I'm going to get three meals out of this. And uh, that was when he wanted to go to the Japanese steakhouse, which I don't like because I use the worst kind of fat. Canola oil is GMO. <coughs> High heat cooking should only be done with these oils that I know of. If you know of others, fine, but I know of three, uh, depending upon what you're making. Uh, I like avocado oil, sunflower oil. Those are good for uh, stir fries and popcorn, really making popcorn non-GMO style the old-fashioned way, not hot air popped in a bag that's filled with preservatives and fats that are terrible for your blood system and your thighs. And the third one's ghee, which is clarified butter. So, um, what occurred was um, I realized that when I thought about visiting him, I, I suddenly just could only feel dread. And that was like, I can't, I'm not going to be with you anymore. You're monopolizing my time. And because I'd already been through a narcissistic relationship, I could see the red flags, even though I'm a little slow with that. So, it caused me to um, reconsider my ex. Well, it didn't cause me to reconsider my ex to be back with my ex, no. It caused me to reconsider my ex to understand how it is um, that a narcissistic personality type is actually able to infiltrate my safe space, my comfort zone, my personal space. And it's because I have to learn how to set healthy boundaries. So I found this little list again of the nine signs you are a grown-up. It's very old and smudged and smeared. And this is, I wrote this in January of 2012, my friends. <laughs> right? Right after we had that like 12, 12, 12 thing, the gateway and David, David Wilcock fucked me over with his ideas. I sucked his proverbial dick, meaning I went for arrow on him, look, hook, line, and sinker. David Wilcock. David Will. David Wilcock. Yeah. <laughs> He's a will fucker. Yeah. He pretends to know things. He, he keeps saying how he's like, well, he used to. Edgar Casey incarnate. Well... I don't think so. So this is the nine signs you are a grown-up. And first of all, healthy boundaries was number five. 
I, I'm still learning how to grow up. I am. <laughs> you know, my eighth grade teacher told me so. So, and the algebra, I was so good in math. She said. She asked me. She said. Um, she asked me. Didn't say. She said. Uh, no, she asked me. <laughs> uh, Kathy, have you thought about what you'd like to be when you grow when you grow up? And I looked at her, completely honestly. And I said, an adult. And she laughed and laughed. Now that woman hardly ever cracked a smile, so that was saying a lot. Yeah, she was a strict teacher, but she was a good teacher. A grown-up, these are the signs. Uh, it means that you've created an expertise in something that you're good at, that you've created. Doesn't mean you're making a living at it, but that would be ideal. It means you've created expertise at something you are good at. And you've, if you created a livelihood, that's even more fabulous. Number two, you come to terms with your sex, meaning gender, <laughs> beliefs of God, your nationality, and your generation. Number two was loaded, wouldn't you say? I did this in 2012. And I was like, yeah, you're truly an adult when you have come to terms with who you are sexually. I'm not looking outside of myself for somebody to like pat me on the back. And if someone goes, oh yeah, well you're a white privileged uh, heterosexual so you've had it easy. Oh yeah? I'm not going to go into the who's the victim game because that's what you're arguing for. Your limitations. Come to terms with your fucking sexuality. If you're born now, guess what? You have all these people catering to you and diversity and all that. So it's like you want even more people to come to it to even more of an extent? Give me an effing break. Come to your beliefs about God. Ah, uh, do you realize religion is implanted? It's fake? And I am going right back to God is love. I am, I am love. I am therefore part of God. And my experience of being, I, I met my twin flame who was consider, consider, considerably younger than me and I was married at the time and we were on the airplane over Texas. So we were like up in the air. Now whether that made a difference or not, I don't know. But I had a kundalini awakening. I had a rising. I lost 10 pounds in, in like a month or so safely. It just melted off. I became beautiful. Um, and... I realized that we have a gift here in this call in our lives and the ability to manifest uh, our life and our love is as great as our ability to stay in the, in the light and in the love. Alrighty, so nationality, in other words, I'm born American, yay, and uh, your generation, all right? I'm in this generation. When I was growing up, they called us the me generation. They told us we were selfish and all we did was think about ourselves. Well, that's what they're doing to the millennials. So I know how you guys feel. So um, number three, I think I, I, I locked, I said, uh, I think I, did I? Yeah, find safety. So find in safety. What is safety? Safety is... Um, Find, creating a way for you to feel good and safe in your own skin. So that means whatever it means. But I knew that if you're living in a fight or flight situation, your brain is not going to be able to go into the creativity because it will go into the reptilian um, mind, which was a hack done by the Anunnaki, who are the bearded gods that duped us all. And yeah, our DNA was fucked with. But we have the ability to self-repair, and we can do that through sun gazing, but even the sun is being shielded to some degree. And I recognize that when I keep looking at it going, why is the sun so white? But I will see these little darts every now and then, and I'll, people will be like waves of light and particles, and I can see all of that. It's very iridescent. And so I, I still like... I put up my Merkaba shield, I spin it, I'll feel, this, I'll feel the spin, and then I will will uh, the light that is beneficial to come to me, and I touch my tongue 
onto the roof of my mouth. Where the soft palate meets the hard palate. And it feels good. It's almost sensual. So, also, number four, don't isolate yourself. Do not isolate yourself. That's number four down there, all smudgy, smeary. Do not become afraid of going outside. Get out, get around, breathe, observe your world, feel your thoughts, but make sure you have your mark up, up. And that's what healthy boundaries are all about. And the healthy boundaries are the things that, when I was like, huh, I'm going to reconsider my past relationship. It's like, ah, my heart, like basically, I'm sparring. I'm learning how to say no to somebody who just wants more and more of my time and energy. And then they don't put it to good use. And it's wasted. My life source, my energy is wasted so that they can have their needs met. So learning how to put your needs first. I'll read that for you because it's scribbly scrawly. Get in the habit of putting yourself first and thinking about your goals and dreams, your needs. Get into the habit of putting yourself first. I had been programmed by my upbringing to put other people's needs before my own. Well, F that crap nowadays. So you want to also acknowledge your successes. If you're constantly thinking forward, 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 and always striving to do something, then you are actually really fueling the fire and recognizing the beauty of and the accomplishments you've already accomplished. You already achieved. So um, I also I like to make a, a gratitude list, all the things I'm very thankful for. And um, I accept my, um, you know, my earth family, sure. Uh, but um, mainly my, my gratitude list would, would probably include my children, um, my healthy body, um, the love that I've actually received from, from men, flawed as it may, have, may, may be, or it has been. They did the best they could. Um, and yet they, and they also taught me. If I did not have these narcissistic men, meaning their needs are important, their needs superseded mine, they never really heard me because my needs didn't exist outside of their, their decisions about who I was for them, how I fulfilled their needs. Um, and they all start off with lots and lots of um, compliments. So I'm always uh, quite cautious when someone compliments me too much. And so uh, this is what I discovered, ladies, if you're not sure if this guy is for real that you have in your life. It would be, um, he has to be able to put up the act for over a month and long-term three months. You will know in three weeks. <laughs> but if you're young and the sex has already started, then you're going to get snowed. So that's why you, you don't want to give that away right away at all because it will confuse you. So, number eight, um, promote possibilities. Um, so, you know, don't set limitations for yourself. You know, don't say no to yourself. And when you promote the possibilities within your own life, it's like putting the, uh, the happiness and good stuff out into the field of possibilities that lies before you. And then you use your willpower because you're not distorted in the, um, the mental mind, the mental mind F. You would then master that third chakra and that willpower, and then you're able to, through that third chakra, which is the color yellow, willpower. It's not a free will universe if you're mind effed every day, and then you don't know where to put your desires and intentions. And number nine I have is, uh, if something's not working, change your methods. We all know the definition of insanity, but most of us seem to be insane. If you keep repeating the same thing, expecting different results, you're crazy. Try something else. So it's like a narcissistic relationship. Reconsid when I said reconsidering my ex, it was like I'm reconsidering the context at which he was able to continue to become part of my life and also 
how I looked at the pattern of his reframing and rewriting of history. He actually texted me and told me that the only reason why he included me in his life was because I kept wanting to be back in his. No. When I left him in 2015, <laughs> it's like four years, four years of that man, four years of him like, I'll change, I'll pr I promise. I'll be different, it'll be different this time. Dream on, narcissist, dream on. It's not your fault you're a narcissist. Okay, narcissist, that's why I, I, can, I feel for you because you had traumatic childhoods, you were given responsibilities um, beyond your years. You were traumatized. You had to parent yourself. You weren't safe. And so therefore you had to create some sort of control over your world. Now, I'm a juicy tidbit love uh, uh, cornucopia. I'm a love like banquet which is why I've had these guys in my life. And I see that. And thank you, Angel, for being a little bit of a shithead. <laughs> if you're listening to this. You didn't exactly put it across the, the right way. You, you, you did a little fear porn. But you got through to me. And I do recognize that I'm going to take a step back from anything and everything outside of my own connection to the divine. Um, because I experienced the Christ light. Jesus wasn't there. The Christ light was there. Jesus was showing us the way, the way to master our own lives. He was crucified. He was killed. He was murdered. He did not die for our sins. That is a joke. <laughs> I'm not going to pray to masters. I'm not going to ask for their energy. I'm going to talk to my higher self and my higher dimensional self. And I'm going to call in my higher dimensional self, my connection to the divine, <laughs> align with that and I'll get my own sword not Mark, uh, Archangel Michael, Michael's sword I've got the ability to cut away tendrils that have no business being in my sphere I've got the ability to bing, 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 take all that away I do I'm the one that has the willpower I'm the human being there you have it so I'll wrap things up because that's about a 32 a minute mark and we're going to wrap it up. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, be, t be paying attention. I, I play with my hair. Be paying attention to the um, cycles of the moon because it awakens your instinct. Be aware of what you see in nature because it awakens your instinct. We've been domesticated far too long. Get a little wild. Get dirty. Touch the ground. Get some dirt on it. Of course, safely, not where dogs have been defecating, okay? <laughs> so celebrate the earth and, the, and learn about the traditions. Get over your programming. Get over your programming that paganism is devil worship. That was an implant. Go to ascensionhelp.com. It's spelled ascensionhelp.com. Cameron Day, he's got some legit shit. And like, check out what he has to say about why he's no longer a light worker. Um, his uh, contributions to the, the freeing of the mind. Because we all come here with good intentions. The last thing I, I found, I've written on my box, is on the bottom. And it says, um, you can gain mastery over your perception and your, of your reality. Um, but there's a, there's a matter, uh, like a little matter, just a little one, and it's called the will center to attend to. It's not a free will universe unless you know how to clean up the third chakra and you know how to, to quelch those mental F disturbances. So get away from the boob tube. Any, any person who wants to talk politics with you, don't. If they keep telling you Trump's a good guy, uh, walk the other direction. Because nobody in any political seat is a good person, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, those well-meaning people, 
uh, the pursuit of truth and and we know guy and Q and all of that. I, I always remember going, um, I didn't li listen to Q and then I just tuned into him this last year, 2019. And I was like, oh, that's a collective. And then, yeah, I found out later it's a collective of some aliens, ET, and I'm, th I'm not sure. I think they telepath their information to humans. And at the same time, they keep saying that something's going to happen, that an event's going to happen. It's all what I said to you. This. Set healthy boundaries. Do you really need somebody outside of yourself telling you that you, that they have the answers for you? Uh-uh. No. And also, is it really working waiting, waiting for someone to rescue you or to, or to like bring healing technology? Physicians heal thyself. They put enough truth in the Bible to, to mind fuck you. So, start exploring more about yourself and become more aware of the truth that you are part of God. You are God's spark, God goddess. And it's love. It's love. It's a, it's a feeling of love, bliss and joy, and laughter and playfulness. So, it's time to take a whole lot of will. I suggest you work on your willpower and find ways of doing that. And when you are celebrating this year's Halloween, <laughs> uh, remember that when we say trick or treat, we're being tricked. So treat yourself to a dose of reality. And get strong in your will center.